All right. So here we go. We are reviewing somebody else's custom set. I've never seen this before. We're just reacting to it and getting design feedback. If you've never heard me give feedback before, you know, there's going to be criticisms in here. No one's perfect on their first try, but here we go. All right. Uh, classes have been replaced by identities. Okay. Understanding identities is crucial to understanding the set mechanics, so we will explore identities first and then go into a breakdown of the set mechanic. Finally, and most importantly, I apologize for my transgressions against TFT. That's my bad. Okay. I, I feel like this is going to get dark soon. Identities. Oh, Jesus Christ. What? <laughs> Identities, Ari. Uh, all allies get a spell power. During the planning phase, you may pay gold to further increase the spell power for the following round. The maximum gold that can be spent this way is 10. Jesus. Wait, what? Why is there a 10 piece bonus? What is going on here? Okay, well, okay, so a couple things. Let's ignore the obvious one of 8 Ari's for a second. Uh, you've kind of done this thing that's just, like, really inverse spell power in a really bad way. Well, no, I guess unless what you're saying... Okay, your wording is a little confusing here, but I think I get it now. If I pay 10G here, I go to 35 spell power. If I pay 1G here, I go to 110. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, I guess there are nine Aries here, aren't there? Wow. Uh, the pay mechanic is interesting, but what I'd say here is, like, that is a lot of UI, so you have to make a new UI where it's, like, anytime you're running an RE comp, there has to be this button that says pay gold that gets added. On mobile especially, that's going to be a nightmare, but okay. I really love, by the way, you can't see it, or if you can, zoom in on your screen, but this RE trait icon, S+. Plus. S plus. That is an amazing trait icon. Also, yeah, ship Ari, what the hell? There's a boat! Oh, there's so much to dive into here. Lit Ari, oh god. Oh god. I, we've, we're just getting started, and I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to this. Identities, Akali. What, what? What is this? You can't just make Ninja Ram as a Kali. I mean, you can, clearly, because you did, but... Okay, a Kali jumps into the enemy back row at the beginning of combat, and their, spe their spells, like there's multiple Akalis. Uh, deal bonus magic damage to champions that are not currently attacking them. Oof. it's a lot of bonus damage. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> I mean, 100 bonus... Wait, their spells deal bonus damage? Yeah, that's not bad. 500 is probably... Like, your scaling's a little insane here. 100, 500, but maybe it's okay. Depends on the rest of the context. At least it's just a number that you can tune. So, yeah, there is no ship Akali. Identities. Alistar. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. Why is there an 11-piece bonus? What is going on here? Two, four, six, eight, eleven. because fuck you. Uh, Alistar's gain bonus health, and all allies gain bonus magic armor and resist. Okay, it's a little confusing that only Alistar gains the health. At least the way you've got it on the tooltip here. Also, you spelled armor with a U, which invalidates everything in your entire presentation. Okay, but basic HP. HP for Alistar, armor and MR for everyone else. Alright, makes sense. Wait, what is, yeah, Alistar, Alistar? What the f- <laughs> oh, Ship, Alistar? Wait, so are we, oh, you're calling the basic skin ship. I get it. Who needs a map? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Who needs a map? Who needs a map? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't know how I'm gonna get through this without laughing anymore. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> Jesus. Ezreal's gain increased attack speed at the end of every round. Receive map fragments and additional map fragments if you win. Uh, once 10 map fragments are collected, a red X will appear on the board. Walking over the X will reward you with a payout from the fortune loot table. No, get rid of the fortune loot table. Just do your own thing. This is too funny of an idea. Like, this is cool. Like, the theming of using the map pieces to find... That, that's a really cool idea. I actually like this idea. Because it basically just comes down to run this bonus, collect coins, get a payout. I mean, like... It's a pretty complicated layer, but it's such a good thematic layer. It's pretty good. But again, I'm trying to not dive into the, the whole like, huh, turns out you have nine Ezreals. That might be a problem from a diversity standpoint. Now I have to be cautious every time I, I listen. Wait, why is Lux back as a seven cost? You can't just throw in the seven cost thing. <laughs> Lux enjoys the company of other Luxes, Lux and octopuses. How do you actually pluralize Lux? I'm getting sidetracked. <laughs> oh my god, this is so good. You may select a Lux with cost 4 or lower after every 6 rounds and add it to your bench. Okay. So every 6 rounds... A discover mechanic kind of appears and says, grab something. By the way, your Blood Moon Lux Flash is just hilarious. Also, you have two Star Guardian Luxes, because of course you do. Uh, I think every six rounds is way too low, but... Or too high. But other than that, like, this is cool. Yasuo. Wait, did you just... Jesus Christ, there's so much to go into here. Uh, Yasuo's true potential can only be unleashed at 0 out of 10. Yasuo's gain HP and AD after every loss. Max 10 stacks. <laughs> okay, that's great. And yes, I enjoy that we have Yasuo and Yasuo. I assume this is supposed to be Yasuo 2. Maybe not. No, Yasuo, Yasuo. Yasuo, Yasuo. Yasuo, Yasuo. Yasuo and Yasuo 2. Oh, because it's a Yone skin. I get it. I get it. Lorenz the boy, appreciate the tier 2 sub for 6 months. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so like, that's the whole champ- Yeah, I know. Who needs a map? Ari, Akali, Alistar, who, who needs, needs a, a map? map? Lux, Yasuo. We got 6 champions in this set. Wait, what? Oh god, this set mechanic. Each champion that appears in your shop has a 2% chance to be suffering from an identity crisis. <laughs> what? An identity crisis changes the champ's inherent identity to one of the five other identities. <laughs> a champion on your board bench that has lost their inherent identity due to identity crisis cannot regain their inherent identity through the use of an identity spatula. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> If a champion is started up, and one of the three champions is suffering an identity crisis, the startup champion will... Yeah, so it stays the same. If a champion is suffering from multiple identical crises, one is selected at random, sure. Spatula items for the set add an identity to the character, sure. Makes sense. Uh, the 2% actually is the big thing that's fucked up here. Uh, as we learned from Chosen, starting off with low odds uh, really ruins your balance here. Uh, I would actually try to normalize the distribution of this. Uh, but otherwise, this shit is hilarious. I love that this is Ar Arcade Akali Yasuo. This is great. Uh, can you decay out of Masters? No, you can't. Okay, here's our set. What the fuck am I... Wait, what? There's other champions? Okay, I see what we did here. Ari, 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 Akali, Akali, Alistar, Alistar, Ezreal, Ezreal, Lux, Lux, Yasuo, Yasuo, Fiora. There's just a Fiora. Okay, this is great. There's a Fiora because, of course, there's a one-cost Fiora. Because, of course, you can't have a TFT set without a one-cost Fiora. Ari, Ari, Akali, Akali, Alistar, Alistar, Ezreal, Ezreal, Lux, Lux, Yasuo, Yasuo, Graves' Cigar, which is lit. 
That's great. Ari, Ari, Akali, 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 Alistar, Alistar, Ezreal, Ezreal, Lux, Lux, Yasuo, Ari, Ari, Akali, Alistar, Alistar, Ezreal, Ezreal, Lux, Lux, Yasuo, Yasuo, Ari, Akali, Alistar, Ezreal, Yasuo, Yasuo 2, Rakan, because SG Rakan, there's actually a trait called SG Rakan's Beloved. Uh, a Mama Zarat, which is a ship, Voidling. Apparently Voidling is a trait now. And Split Personality Lux, who's a 7 cost. Okay. These are pictures. The penguin. The penguin is good. Tree. Yep. Wait, which one is this? Oh, prestige. Prestige with money. That makes total sense. Blood Moon is just a Batman. I like it. Pop Star. High Tech. Star Guardian. Lit. Academy. Makes sense. All right, Academy. Oh God. Oh God. Okay, in eight, Academy champions are busy during school hours, 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. During that time, they have bonus health, taunt nearby enemies every five seconds, and can take no actions. Monsters are not allowed on school grounds and will be vaporized on site by an orbital cannon during school hours. No more, this is not because theoretically Fiora loses to round one creeps. You're being ridiculous and overthinking things. <laughs> Who does that? <laughs> I like how we joked around about Aphelios being like tied to the phases of the moon, and here you're just like, yo, you play you play during 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. These traits are garbage. During off hours, they have greatly reduced health, as school was pretty stressful, but they don't really have time for your shit, so they have bonus attack speed for the first six seconds of combat. Every few spell casts, academy units throw a book at their current spell tar- Jesus, okay. The joke here is a little, like, wordy. You could cut it in half and still get the point. Let's see here. 500 HP, 50% reduced HP, 25% attack speed, book thrown every three spell casts, Tome of Wisdom, History kept- Stop! You hurt my soul here! So there are different books, and each book gained 2 XP immediately. Slow the attack speed, deal 300 damage, gain 5 gold immediately, charm carry- Like, I feel like you made this just to, like, hurt me. You're like, how could we hurt Mort? I know. We could do this. This is great. This is great. I, again, I have to say props to the one-star Fiora, though, with no identity. <laughs> Arcade! Holy cow, that last drop. <laughs> the delivery is so good. <laughs> I just got wrecked. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, this trait's fine. Free GA. Love it. By the way, fun fact, whenever somebody sees a trait and says, oh, that's just free GA, just know that you're causing absolute pain to Whitrock. Uh, <laughs> if, you, if you ever see Riot Whitrock and want to hurt his soul, just be like, why is this trait just a free this? Uh, it's become a meme on the team now, and we love teasing him. So, it's just free GA. You love free GA. Okay, Arctic. There's a cold wind blowing in from the north, making everybody chilly, slowing movement speed, and making it harder to concentrate for all characters. Arctic units don't get... Ch wait. Okay. Arctic units don't get chilly. They're the type of people who are outdoors in shorts and a t-shirt below freezing. You know that guy. We all know that guy. I'm talking about you, Brady. Fuck you, Brady. <laughs> so does the cold wind come in if you play in Arctic? Or is it always on? If it's always on, that's annoying. 10% reduced movement speed. Reduced movement? Who uses movement speed? I hate that trick. 10% reduced mono generation from all sources. All right, cool. I don't like the movement speed, though. That's annoying. All right, Blood Moon. Blood equals Vlad. Moon equals Diana. Blood Moon equals Vlad Diana. Quick math. <laughs> At the beginning of combat, so, Jesus Christ, you really went with this. 
At the beginning of combat, summon a one-star Vlad and a one-star Diana with no traits or items randomly on your side of the board. Okay. At the beginning of combat, summon a two-star Vlad and a two-star Diana with no traits, each with a gunblade randomly on your side of the board. Characters summoned are from TFT set 4.5 Festival of Beasts. This is funny, but a four-piece trait to summon a one cost and a two cost, like, that's not good. You gotta give me something here, like... This should have been two star and this should have been three star. Then it'd be worth it. Love the joke though. All right, high tech. High tech units are obsessed with getting the newest iPhone the day it releases. High tech units gain bonus stats while equipped with the most or tied for the most items among units. You... Okay. High tech units gain bonus stats while equipped with the most or tied with the most items among units you control. This bonus is doubled if one of the held items is spatulous. High-tech units without the most items becomes quite salty and lose some stats as a result. Oh god, you've made Cybernetic 2.0. So if I'm running five high-tech, each with one item, they all get plus 20% all stats. If I put in a sixth one that without an item, that sixth one gets minus 10% all stats. Okay. Uh, the other thing I'll point out here is that what does all stats mean mana dodge movement speed what is all stats we actually wanted to do all stats but it's always been something we stay away from because we don't know what all the stats are attack range does this increase your attack range 20 percent so you know <laughs> why not that's how you know it's a solid well thought out design why not? Fuck it. <laughs> uh, okay, Origins lit. <laughs> Fucking great. I, now I just kind of want to know how Grave Cigar looks on the map. Like, is it just literally the cigar laying there on the ground? Does it have an ult? Does it roll around? What does it do? These guys are so hot, it sets the whole arena on fire. Lit champions are not affected by the blaze. Okay, so you've got weather effects. So what happens if you're running Arctic Lit? Do you have a on-fire arena with a windy blow? A light campfire appears in the middle of the board. All champions take 10 true damage. A forest fire rages across the board. All champions take 35% true damage. The board is now a volcano. Volcanoes are quite warm this time of year. All champions take 75 true damage. I like how it's your board too. So like, why would you play this? Perfect. You are rather uncomfortable being both too hot and too cold at the same time. True suffering. All right, I want to play this champion. Why is that pop star Alistar? He doesn't even look like a pop star. Uh, the enemy champion with the weakest willpower is enthralled by the pop star song as long as you have a pop star champion alive. The enthralled character whips out a lighter, waving it back and forth in the air. They take no other action. Uh, the enthralled champion now sings along. Pop star champions are inspired by the adoration of their fan and gain 25% spell power and attack speed while they continue to sing along. The first time a pop star dies, the enthralled champion becomes enraged. They whip out a butterfly knife and start wildly stabbing the closest champion. Their rage allows them to damage allied champions, have 50% increased attack damage, and only the stab item. They continue to wave their lighter around while singing. <laughs> I'm so happy! <laughs> Do you know how hard it is to wave a lighter and stab somebody? Is that something you've done before? That's hard. Um, uh, actually, from a normal trait design perspective, though, it's kind of interesting here, because you're basically saying, three-piece, their weakest champion doesn't get to play anymore. Five-piece, their weakest champion doesn't get to play anymore, and you gain some spell power. And then seven-piece, you mind control their weakest champion. That's, it's actually, like, not that bad. Ignoring the whole, like, thematic layer, like, there's something there. That's kind of cool. Uh, Prestige is all about the gold, baby. All gold, everything. Two-piece. The equivalent of having a shirt that says Supreme. This does nothing, but when you have this trait and your opponent does not, you're overcome with a sense of superior. I mean, this is the kind of trait where if you really wanted to sell the joke, you take a screenshot in game of, like, the trait window, and you show the two-piece Prestige, and it's just like fucking shooting lightning and sparkling and it's diamond and prismatic and it's got fireworks. 
Still does nothing! But that's what it does. Uh, all gold everything. Gain double gold from all sources except for selling one and two star units. Visually your units and your bench appear to be three starred. This effect is strictly visual and has no actual impact on anything. Oh god. Oh god. So your entire board looks three star, but the enemy has no idea what is three star or not. Love it. Would never ship it, but love it. Love it. I... <laughs> That's a lot of pairs! I'm... Yep. <laughs> oh, what is an online fandom without its ships? Why, one of the oldest ships I can remember is Lux X Ezreal, so that's in. And then Ari and Yasu are currently riding on a ship in the latest cinematic, so that counts. And then I ship Alisar X Mama Zarat, very kawaii. Is it wrong to to ship a married void entity with a hulking cow man? <laughs> yeah, probably. Uh, this trait only works when the proper ships are on your board. You can't ship Mama Zarat and Yasuo. That would be ridiculous. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Shipping characters crashes a ship into the enemy team at the beginning of combat, dealing damage in the area and increasing the mana cost of their next spell. Lifeboat. Oh god, you even made the ships to show the... Jesus Christ. Lifeboat. 200 damage and increases mana cost. Tugboat, Bodie McBoatface, yep, okay, this is great. You know why this is extra great, by the way? This is like a nice reference to Kunkka. It's like the original, you just get the, the Kunkka boat coming in. You know, the reference to the original deck, so I like this, this is great. The whole complicated, like, you only get the two-piece if you're running Ezreal and Lux and not Ezreal and Yasuo, that's a little weird, but, you know... Spirit! The first time a spirit casts their spell, all allies gain bonus attack speed. Each spirit can only grant the bonus attack speed once, but it lasts for the entire combat, and each different spirit bonus stack with each other. Uh, Star Guardian. When Star Guardians cast their spell, an amount of mana is distributed evenly amongst other Star Guardians. Yep, that's Star Guardian. Cool. Two brothers! Two brothers should have a healthier relationship than stay exiled from each other, and we promote good familial, familial relationships. If both characters with this trait are adjacent at the start of comp... <laughs> I love that you basically undid exile here. That's great. I love that the one piece bonus is just, I missed my brother, I should give him a call. And third, Hannah, you better not have had anything to do with this. So, that's good stuff. I like it. And yeah, Yasuo 2 is still great. Alright, Woodland. At the start of combat, select Woodland units, create a copy of themselves. Man, 5 Woodland was fun. 5 Woodland was fun. Also, there's a Rakan, because of course there's a Rakan. Okay. 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 Upon reaching 10% health, uh, unique traits angry. Upon reaching 10% health, or the first time this character would die, Alistar becomes immune and channels for one second. Then he pops like a balloon, exploding into a bunch of mini Alistars. Mini Alistars dance, make cow puns, and are not treated as units. The explosion deals board-wide AoE damage. This ability does 50% damage to allies. Perfect. Unique traits ninja on this Akali. This Akali here. It's great. Uh, spells can critically strike, taunt... All nearby enemies every three seconds. Replace all sound effects with okay. <laughs> Jesus. Now I'm just imagining all the normal sound effects in the game. It's just like, okay, 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 Voids the first enemy spell cast. Sure. Voids every third auto attack against the character. 
Stop. Voids one random enemy champion's armor at the start. Stop. Voids all complaints about the current TFT patch. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. Too complicated, but perfect. Ignores unit collision. Immunity to crowd control. Never stops moving. Looks pretty cute. Probably would prefer to date set over Zaya. Okay. I have no response. The current time is considered to be 10.30 p.m. As it is pretty dark out, all champions have 33% chance to miss all attacks and abilities. Champions affected by increased character brightness are not affected by this missed chance. Jesus. The funny thing is, we've been talking about dodge a lot lately, and if there's a way to, like, normalize it. But can you imagine, like, 33% chance to miss all attacks, and then you attack 12 times and never miss? That's the kind of stuff the challenger players really hate. I... Amazing. Having split personality Lux on your venture board transforms all other split personality. Yep. Yep. So it's Lux, except instead of Lux being elements, she's champions. And of course, my personal favorite is Lux Lux. <laughs> so does Lux Lux count three times? Like double for this and one for this? Also these symbols, like... But yeah, Lux Lux. Lux Lux. Oh, that's why there's an 11 piece Lux bonus. I get it. Oh, God. We have to go through every champion. Oh, God. We have to go through every champion. I'm taking a drink. I'm still dying from that fucking. That last trait was complicated, wasn't it? Alright. I, uh. I'm not going to go too deep on these, but I'm going to go pretty quick, so... Okay. Uh, whenever an ally casts her spell within two X of her, Ari gains two mana. Ari empowers her next auto attack to do bonus damage and some AoE, or heal. Yeah, sure. Makes sense. Fires a skill shot. Yep. Charming them. Okay, sure. One cost charm. Might be a two cost. Uh... Every four basic attacks of Kali empowers her karma, dealing additional damage and healing. Sure, seems like the last spell, but sure. Sure, I can flip. A Kali throws a shuriken at the champion with the cutest butt. Love it. Love it. Cutest butt. It's always Alistar, right? After a second, she jumps to that <laughs> booty, dealing bonus magic damage in a small area. Perfect. Love it. Alistar wanders aimlessly around the largest club of enemy champions, dealing damage around them. He does not ignore unit collision, colliding with the enemies, and moving on with the static Jesus Christ. <laughs> ah, this is so good. Alistar knocks back the closest enemy champion to the back row, stunning them, dealing magic damage, and making all ally champions drop aggro on that character. Okay, cool. Uh, target the enemy most likely to use a map. <laughs> okay. Targets the first enemy, dealing magic damage to all enemies. Between Ooh, that's really strong. For a one cost, that's insanely strong. Even at 0 out of 80, that's still really strong. Uh, Lux fires a sphere of light at the closest enemy. Stunning him. Yep. Lux is tired from the excitement at the slumber party. Drained of her magical energies, Lux grabs a flashlight she found laying around and flashes it in the closest enemy's eyes, dealing magic damage and mental damage and blinding them for two seconds. Attack speed 0 0.0001. Nice. Love it. I'm going to miss some of these things, but I want to know what mental damage is. Yasuo begins combat with a shield equal to his max HP. Whenever Yasuo moves three hexes, he refreshes that shield. That's kind of cool. I actually like that a lot. That's pretty neat. You're taking it right now. <laughs> True. Yasuo strikes forward. Yep. Same thing. <laughs> oh, Fiora. Poor Fiora. Oh, oh, we get to figure out what the cigar does. All right, Grave Cigar. So it's a melee champion. Has a good amount of health. Uh, gains increased attack speed and shrinks in size. Wait, like it could get any smaller? Attack speed percentage increase equal to missing health. When Graves of Cigar sputters out when it's killed, it sputters out smoke cloud in its hex, which leaves champs blinded. Okay. 
I'm a little disappointed. I'm still trying to figure out how a cigar just like rolls around and has, you know, 60 AD. I wanted to see more from the cigar here. Gonna give that a thumbs down. All right, Ari. Create orbs around her. The orbs fire. They do damage. They're not monolocked. Cool. Ari fires an orb in a line. Deals damage. True damage on the way back. Yep. Kali throws a karma at her current target, marking them for three seconds. Dealing magic damage. Kali's basic attack. Mark target. Heal. Bonus damage. Damage. Bonus healing into damage. Into healing into damage. Cool. Uh, Akali deals damage in a cone with the damage. Good. The damage. Pulverize. Alistar pulverizes the ground underneath the target's feet, stunning them and adjacent enemies and dealing damage. Great. Every enemy takedown heals your team by a bunch of their maximum HP. Passive. Wow. That's a very powerful passive. That's like a super trait. That's like really good. Especially at three star. Jesus. Every attack gives Ezreal a stack of spell force. Each stack increases Ezreal's attack speed up to the attack speed cap. Once he reaches the attack speed cap, he gets a cap on his head. It's a nice cap. Cap stack. Caps on caps. If Ezreal sold while wearing a nice cap, he sells for an additional gold per cap. No cap. Jesus. <laughs> okay. Now I just want to see Ezreal on the board with like a stack of caps. And it, like, has physics, and it's, like, waving as he moves and shit. Jesus. <laughs> uh, Ezreal fires a single target spell, highs attack speed, dealing magic damage, and slowing attack speed. Sure. Uh, Lux fires an orb of light at the enemy who most recently had a birthday. <laughs> oh, God. I, I'm, I'm copying all these targeting parameters, and we're totally shipping them. What happens if there's a tie for a birthday? Is it just random? That's what Twitch chat would ask me. Uh, Lux fires a sphere of light at the furthest ally. All allies in the sphere pass through are shielded. Once the shield reaches the target, returns the Lux reapplying the shield. Yep. Turntable's massive wall of wind. A really big wind wall blocks enemy projectiles. It's pretty big and pretty windy. You're just going to have to take my word for it. God damn it. I don't want to ship wind wall ever. Is this written by Riot? No, this is not written by Riot. Uh, last breath. Yasuo blinks to the furthest enemy unit with an attack rage and knocks him up into the air. Man, who would ever ship that spell? Am I right? Idol's Charm. Ari sends two charms off the map. They loop around the backside of the board, targeting the furthest enemies, doing magic damage, and charming them. Cool. The targeting parameters prioritize making a heart if possible. Yep, I see that. Cool. Ari leaps back, dealing magic damage to your current attack target and healing her. Cool. I, I, I admire, by the way, the really cool challenge of trying to make sure that, like, you use every move in the champion's arsenal in different ways. Bravo. Kali vanishes in a cloud of smoke, reappearing in an open space within two X's. When she reappears, she inflames her karma. Comma. I keep saying karma. Comma. Empowering her next two auto attacks, dealing damage. Cool. Kali begins combat with three charges. The Kali gains a charge every time a champion is killed. When Kali has charges... She will use one per second to dash to the enemy and do damage. Damage. You can't milk those! <laughs> you can't milk those! You can milk those. Alistar lets us know that you can't milk those. He then runs to the supermarket and picks up a bottle of milk. Milk can be sold for two gold. Alistar's bones go stronger with each milk acquired, permanently granting Alistar 3620 armor with each milk run. The funny thing is, is like, how would that actually work? So you've got this Alistar in combat. Alistar, Alistar, of course, by the way. And he fights, fights, gains mana, runs off the map like a thieves' gloves, comes back, a milk goes on your bench... And he keeps fighting. Kind of like Bard. So obviously what you do is you build super tanky Alistar so he generates a ton of mana. And he's just constantly running off the board generating milk. This just seems insane. I think milk's OP. Now the real question is, is this delicious milk or is it just like okay milk? Is it 2%? Is it chocolate milk? 
Are there bonus types of milk you can get? That's the question. All right. Can be cast while crowd controlled, cleanses all enemy CC, becomes immune. Yep, that's a cool one. Unbreakable will. Extremely magical pulse. I get it, EMP. Ezra files a burst of arcane image, explodes. Yep, Mono Reeve set three, cool. Elven Essence Flex. Shoots a line of magical energy who most resembles a banana. Who is that? Who is that? Healing allies and marking enemies the spell passes through. Allies in the line are healed for health. Hitting a marked enemy champion consumes a mark and grants attack speed. Cool. Lux. Does damage. Stuns. Great. Lux. Razor staff in the air. Illuminating all nearby allies within three hexes. They get a shield and spell power and a brightness. They get brightness for the darkness. Cool. Okay. <laughs> God damn it. Uh, Yasuo sheaths his sword and pulls it out so fast it creates a torrent of fire in a line, destroying any projectiles it hits. Oh, I hate that. And causing enemies to take damage. All right, cool. A Kali, because, you know, it's a Kali. It's still a Kali. Throws kunai that deals okay magic damage. All right, mm-hmm. I snuck Ramus in. Please don't tell right. This is definitely a Kali, a highly marketable and profitable League of Legends champion. <laughs> okay, that's funny. Ari. Ari transforms into her fox form, dashes once before transforming in, into the lowest cost ally champion, dropping aggro, casting their spell, then going back to normal form. That'd be a bitch to implement. But cool. Spirit Bomb. Channels for 1.5 seconds and chucks it sucker at all your enemies. If the full charge goes off, it'll do tons of damage, but if you don't charge the full duration, it will go about as well as any time Goku tried to use this ability in Dragon Ball Z. If the channel is interrupted, Ari gets embarrassed and shoots her load early. <laughs> Jesus, gross. Uh, all right. After casting this spell, Alistar deals magic damage around him every second. In addition to this, every third auto deals more damage and stuns the target. Eh, it's okay. Alistar pulverizes the ever-living hell out of the earth, making magma explode from the planet's core. Enemy champions in a large area are knocked into the sky like some sort of butterfly that can fly. Twice, twice, point five, twice to the third power. <laughs> okay, these, I like these. That's great. Once they reach the ground, their toesies are scorched by the magma beneath their feetsies, and they take an initial... Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, Alistar seems pretty lit. He seems more lit than the lit trait. Oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, true Shot Barrage. Target the first enemy, dealing magic damage. Magic damage. Great. Slumber Party Hop. Ezreal's auto attacks are replaced by arcane shifts, moving one hex and dealing magic damage to close his enemy. Sure. When Ezreal reaches max mana, he accidentally shifts through time, moving three hexes instead of one. If Ezreal is below 50% health, he travels back through time, dealing 25% of his max HP. Otherwise, he travels forward through time. Okay, a little complicated, but sure. Melee carries trying fruitlessly to catch one jumpy boy. True. This song's cool, by the way. Solar Flare. Lux deals damaged enemies in a cone in front of her. They're blinded, noobs. The power of all our hearts together. Once Lux reaches max mana, she casts a Lucent Singularity in the center of the board. For the rest of combat, Lux channels to grow the Singularity. During this time, Lux is immune to crowd control. The Singularity pops 0.5 seconds after Lux dies. If Lux is the last unit remaining, or if the damage that would be dealt by the Singularity would kill all enemies. The Singularity... Deals a bunch of damage for each second she's cat. Oh, that's kind of cool. That's kind of neat. It, it's probably too, like, visually noisy, but it's cool. Uh, Yasuo blinks to the first enemy, knocking them up with one second. Did damage. If an enemy champion is knocked up by a different ability, cast his ability for free. Cool. It's Yasuo. Dashes through an enemy, dealing damage. Every third cast, he deals damage with the damage. Summoning a Tempest, dealing damage. 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 Final spark. Oh my god, you kept my five nine nine nines. Love it. Perfect execution. Akali jumps three hexes through the closest enemy champion, dealing damage. It's damage and marking him after two seconds. Dash damage. Damage. If the enemy is executed by a second strike, they are below 33% health. Damage. Monolock. Damage. Targets. Damage. Cool. Damage. 
I don't... Okay. Staying on the DL from the paparazzo. Akali throws down a ring of shadow for 10 seconds. While inside the shroud, she does extra critical strike, takes less damage, and is invisible while not crowd control. While visible in the shroud, they take more damage. Eh. That doesn't feel like a 5 cost spell. And you already used the shroud earlier. This just feels boring. You gotta do something cooler than this. Today I'm feeling rather upset. Now I'm angry Redux. As Alistar takes more damage, he grows in size, dealing more damage. For every damage he takes, he gets more health. These effects scale infinitely. This is like a weird math problem. Where eventually he just takes less damage than he gains and goes infinite. Which is why it's hilarious. I do like math. I do like math. I recently got into TFT and my friend told me that I'm most likely to get units that share traits with the ones I have on my bench board. Is that true? That is definitely not true. Your friend is a liar. Yasuo stabs forward, dealing enemies in line, attack not miss, and third cast. Oh, that's a reprint. Cool. Uh, seal fate. Split. Damage. Reprint. Cool. Reprint. Two brothers. Reprint. Great. Mama Zerat, married with children. Oh god, I hope not yet, Hannah. Uh, Mama opens up a Zerat portal and calls the family to battle, summoning Papa Zerat and two, four, ten of the children of the void. For the rest of combat, Mama casts Rupture. Rupture deals void spikes in a large area, dealing damage and knocking up all enemies. Papa Zerat is an exact duplicate of Mama Zerat, including items. Cool. With a void tier that does damage, damage, and more Zerats, which are damage. Cool. Ezreal, Pulse Fire Resolutions, different spells, damage, all seems good. True Shot Barrage, Super Elite, love it, damage. <laughs> I'm not even reacting. I'm not reacting. You get nothing. Look at that. Look at that guy. Look at that clown, by the way. Look how short his beard is. Look at this. You got nothing on me, past Mort. You're a loser. Loser. Lahu. Zeher. Ari. Ari dashes and shoots out a skill shot at the closest enemy, dealing damage. Charming enemy, dealing damage. Ari repeats this, doing damage. Cool. Damage. Alright. The quickness. Model Beyblade. Rakan has gotten sick of running around all the time. There's no flare in just running. Rakan is taking up a new hobby, spinning around really fast. <laughs> Rakan spins around like a cute tornado. Enemy champion spins around their charm. There's a lot of charm effects in this set. Don't be mean to the past mort. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. Uh, damage, charming, damage, allies he spins through are impressed and healed. This effect is similar to Singe Poison Trail. Yeah, that's kind of neat. Oh god, it still keeps going! Items are a lot to think about, and honestly the set felt like it was missing some Aries, Ezreals, etc. So I replaced all of the items with more champions. So equip your Yasuo with an Ezreal and go beat Lux over the head with a stylish young lad. Amazing. Um... Have you guys seen the, the, the Gwyn holding Camille images yet? Because those are great, by the way. Items no longer drop in orbs. At the end of each PvE stage, a single champion will drop as an item conversion of that champion. A champion can only be equipped with one champion item. Spatulas still drop at the same rate as 4.5. All other orbs contain gold and Nico's help. Identity spatulas are made by combining an item with a champion. New item added, Moonlight Spatula, because fuck Mort, apparently. Amazing. Ari, 50% increased spell power. Jesus. Akali, 75% increased critical strike. Damn him. These items are beast. These items are insane. <laughs> Lux, increased character brightness. Unaffected by lactose intolerance. Amazing. Amazing. Carousels are guaranteed to have at least one champion of each identity. Gar carousels are guaranteed to have at least one champion item from each identity. The remaining three characters are random. Makes sense. Thank you for attending my Teddy talk. God damn it. Whew. 
Whew. That's a lot of people. Are these just like random words? I can't tell if these are random words. Austin, Con, Burke, Icon, Dimitri, Dylan, Eucalypt, Fuse Studio, Handicon, Icon Mark. The Reverend Martin Luther King Jr., Famous Stringer, Aaron, 1423, Sub Icon, Mike Rice, Raid Shadow Legends, Casual's Mom, The Mod Team, My Mom, Right, Geo, Amazing, and TJ. All right, we did it. We did it. I mean, I know I don't say this often, but there's probably nothing you could improve from this, and we should just ship it. I mean, there's nothing, nothing you could possibly change. All right, that was really fun, though, and I'm kind of dying of laughter. That was great. I, I loved it. Well played. Well played.